Thank you. Liz. Thank you very much. So I'm really happy to be here because, as Liz said, uh, one year ago we had the chance to present uh, and showcase NetWars in the production process, and now we launched everything. And um, yeah, it was a long journey, and um, now we can finally show every platform. And uh, yeah, we finally survived. So. Um, before I talk too much about the project, I would love to introduce you to an interesting guy you might have heard about, have seen him, and um, he speaks for himself. Dear leaders of the world, royal families, cult leaders, beloved terrorists, all of you are in critical positions, and it's only natural that you ask yourself, what went wrong? What went wrong? Are you tired of the old school way? Tired of shooting people, bombing hospitals, enriching uranium? Don't despair. Everything is not lost. We can still turn things around. How you ask? Example, New York City, 9 a.m., two million people riding elevators. And every last single one of those elevators, controlled by IT chips, manufactured far from home. Nowadays, they come with built-in extra features like nanoscale backdoors. By the way, similar chips are processed in drones, vault prison security systems, water supply systems, etc., 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 etc. It all comes down to the question, why build new weapons when you can turn anything into a weapon? Click one. Elevators all over the city get stuck. Maybe that's all you want. Maybe you just want to scare them to death, give them a little perspective. Or maybe you're a real bad motherfucker. Are you? Well, then proceed to click two. Whatever it is you want to teach the world, I don't judge. I'm just a salesman. So now, do you want to play? So this guy you uh, hopefully already met, uh, has got a profession which is uh, really paying off, I think, now. He's in the digital um, yeah, armament business. He's a digital cyber dealer. And uh, when we started with this project, um, we decided, um, or we, we thought about how is it possible to um, give a very abstract uh, topic uh, something emotional, something you can really can um, yeah, engage with, and we decided to um, invent uh, this figure, but um, his profession is uh, really true. He, um, so people are um, making good business um, by um, selling virus um, worms and trojans, and um, so that's the guy who's behind the whole project. Um, as I said, um, cyber war is something really abstract. Um, when we started it, uh, everybody was asking, it doesn't affect me, it's something really far away, um, it doesn't bother me. And um, so we uh, tried to bring you a little bit nearer to the whole thing and invented uh, this person. And um, he's bridging several formats. And uh, we have got uh, seven different platforms and I would love to show a trailer which gives a brief introduction into the different platforms. Do you remember the attack on Estonia in 2007? All that commotion, all those people without money or gasoline? Well, that was in the past. We were just fooling around then. Welcome to our little shop of opportunity. We are in the midst of what appears to be a colossal and history-making blackout. The whole of the Highly sophisticated hacking attacks could cause blackouts, lasting for weeks. I'd get all the parts from eBay or other retailers. Then I'd teach myself how to hack the generator. Look at Stuxnet, look at Estonia, look at so many of these cases are this back and forth. They want to attack us. The world's biggest problem is Israel's biggest opportunity. Why build new weapons when you can turn anything into a weapon?
Spreading ideology has never been easier. So let's talk about information, the art of warfare on an educated level. I offer you the tools to hit your enemy where it really hurts. Immerse yourself in the new dimension of storytelling. The interactive graphic novel you've never seen before. Whatever it is you want to teach the world, I don't judge. I'm just a salesman. Maybe you just want to. Why oppress people when you can infiltrate them? Why? Why torture them when you can fuck them? So we have uh, seven different platforms, and um, every platform can stand on its own, but it's, uh, each part is interconnected. So it's okay for you to hop from, another, uh, from one platform to another, and um, every platform offers you a special angle to the uh, topic cyber war. Uh, we started with the info portal um, in February, so it's... Uh, we gather news, present um, relevant news about the topic, and uh, we collect the most important information about cyber war. We also generate own content, like interviews, reports, comments from experts, and finally, there's also a help desk. So that means uh, you get information about how can you protect against surveillance, uh, what can you do, for example, to encrypt your email or something like this. Um, the core of the whole project, and it was the starting point, is um, a 52-minute uh, TV documentary about um, how to hack a so uh, uh, energy supplier. And uh, I would love to show you the trailer. An individual with a single laptop could cause as much devastation or even more devastation uh, than a traditional piece of military munition such as a bomb or so. All you need is three hackers with questionable morals and a bit of money. Hacking is like a weapon. Weapons can kill or protect people. It depends entirely on the perspective. Look at Stuxnet, look at Estonia, look at so many of these cases are this back and forth. They want to attack us. The world's biggest problem is Israel's biggest opportunity. So? Yes. Okay, now we're in the control center. It really is the control center for power, water, and gas in one. You can say lights off, power off, water off, water off. And you're in there now? Yep. How long did that take? Three days. So as you saw, uh, the red line of the story and never done uh, before in front of a camera was uh, yeah, a hack, uh, exclusive hack of a German energy supplier. 
Um, very typical energy supplier, not very big. Um, he's providing energy and um, water for 30,000 um, people. And um, he agreed to be uh, stress tested. So normally um, they are doing it um, yeah, not in front of cameras. And uh, he wanted to know how vulnerable he really is. And uh, our hacker finally had the possibilities to switch off the lights and um, some other very critical things. And um, now uh, the result is really widely discussed in the German energy supplier um, scene because now nobody can say anymore, uh, it doesn't affect me. And um, yeah, that was the core. Um, then we uh, put the story into the near future. Um, it's fact-based fiction. You saw the graphic novel I show you. Immerse yourself in the new dimension of storytelling. The interactive graphic novel you've never seen before. Transport network in Norway, and they're being paid to do it by the government. They think this is a war game. A 3D motion graphic novel you've never experienced before. Interact with the story, carry out the attacks, be inside the machines and mines of the hackers, and become part of Net Wars Out of Control. Media experience. So this is uh, something for us very new because we um, work together with a um, publishing house, a German publisher which um, really um, stepped into cross media and um, is going international. So this graphic novel, the first episode, was published in six um, different versions, in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and finally also in Chinese. So that's a real big challenge for us to enter the Chinese market. And uh, yeah, we published it uh, in May. And uh, what was also very new for us, um, they came up with the idea to um, tie the whole project into an ebook version. That means um, there's also uh, ebook and audiobook version of the story. It's not uh, the same story, it's a kind of prequel. And the story writer who wrote the story for the graphic novel also wrote um, the story for the ebook series. And uh, it's still going on. That means we are going to publish uh, the next episodes in January. And it's a very yeah, fruitful uh, collaboration uh, and something really new for us. And um, the most important interactive part in the web was the interactive web doc. And uh, I would like to show you how it works. Um, it's a uh, five-part interactive web series. And I think. How would it feel? when everything around you suddenly goes dark. You never know who's in control. Do you really think, really think that you have nothing to hide? Let's see how vulnerable you really are. So the salesman is um, the guiding figure uh, who is leading th through uh, the web doc, and I s um, step into episode five, because there's a good example how it works. Sorry. At last, my friend, we come to the root of all these horrors. Why did we open Pandora's box? Why poison the digital age which could have provided us with so many blessings? What, what could possibly be more important than sharing our ideas and happiness, our struggles and tragedies with each other with the world, without fear of trickery, worms, and viruses. Well. 
So the, the expert uh, you see, um, they are also uh, in the TV documentary, down. and um, you can get a, additional information. So it's a mixture between uh, that you can listen to them and and also um, much more forces can afford themselves to build a very uh, powerful cyber weapon uh, without investing the amounts that a country or a power or superpower can invest in uh, its uh, uh, classic uh, weapon systems. Fear is the biggest market out there. Numbers don't lie. And since 9-11, these numbers have been exploding. It's beautiful if you look at it from the right angle. In 2013, nearly 53 billion U.S. dollars was spent for 16 Secret Service operations in the U.S. This includes the payroll for 107,000 employees. The NSA alone received $10.5 billion in 2013, a total budget increase of over 50% compared to 2001. Include another $60 billion allocated for the Department of Homeland Security and it adds up to a budget of over $100 billion, a doubling of the spending since 2001. The development of defensive and offensive cyber capabilities is responsible for an ever-growing slice of federal budgets. And as always, the military is looking for experts in the industry. You're the greatest gathering of technical talent anywhere in the world. The whole reason I came here was to ask you to help us make it better. That's where the real money is. In the next three years, the global cybersecurity market is expected to skyrocket, to nearly double from $67 billion in 2013 to $120 billion by 2017. Following the USA, the biggest players in the market are Israel, Britain, Russia, India, and Brazil. With buyers such as the NSA or the GCHQ, prices range from $35,000 up to $160,000 for the discovery and sale of a single software system flaw. Companies like Endgame created Zero Day, a complete product package customized to specific needs. So I think the principle is really clear. It's uh, mixture between um, animated infographics, um, the cyber war dealer, and also we gather personal data and involve it into the documentary. Um, our partners were um, Arte, Futur, and also a big um, German IT portal, um, name is Heise, and that was a very new experience to work uh, with them together because they never ever did uh, interactive stuff before, but they have got a big fan base, a big audience, uh, IT-related audience, and that matched very well together with uh, the art uh, audience, so that was something complementary. Um, as you see, uh, what we try to manage is building up an IP and a brand with a longer sustainable uh, shelf life, and um, so, um, we try to mix facts and fiction without mixing it up. So everything has got a journalistic background, and um, that means uh, facts are not um, going to fiction, and it's not weird science fiction. Everything which uh, we tell on the fiction base is uh, well researched, but fiction is still fiction, and fact is still fact, and that's very important not to mix it up. And our guy, um, yeah, is bridging the different formats and platforms, and he's yeah the face of everything. Uh, just a few words uh, how we release it. As I said, uh, info portal in February, then the web formats and uh, the TV documentary was um, broadcasted in April, and um, the audiobook and ebook series and the graphic novel came in um, May and the TV series is uh, still work in progress. Um, very important for us as well, um, new 
yeah, combination, as I said, uh, how can we earn money with it? And so we licensed uh, the web doc uh, to Arte and uh, to Heise and to other partners, and um, we still own the brand, and uh, licensing uh, is uh, the thing we, we're going to yeah, uh, extend. Uh, the direct business model um, of the graphic novel is um, we sell it uh, in the app stores, so it's uh, um, available as an iOS version and also uh, Android version, and um, that's our new core business model. And uh, of course, it takes longer. It's not like uh, going up like a rocket, but it's a sustainable business, and it's now uh, getting better. And um, yeah, in terms of developing our um, company um, from a TV documentary production company to a cross-media company, it was very important to have own business models, not to be dependent on um, getting money from broadcasters and um, so really direct customers' relationships. That's uh, the ebook and uh, audiobook series. And very important, we talk a lot about the social media campaign. We also engaged uh, professional partners because um, it was very important to have expertise in, and we managed to engage Young and Rubicon. For them, it was a nice showcase um, because normally they um, make advertising for, for cheese, and now they stepped into something more <laughs> uh, profound. And um, so we, we found a f uh, good cooperation, and they did the whole social media campaign, starting with the little game for the graphic novel release and um, a Facebook campaign with different ads. And um, these are little stickers uh, you found in Germany uh, when you were entering a lift. <laughs> and also tried to get money from your ATM. And this was shown, um, so-called Berliner Fenster. It's um, the advertising possibility in the metro. So it has no tone. And finally, some numbers and figures. So the web documentary went really well. Uh, we had over 1.4 million uh, unique page views. We had over 100,000 users. And the duration is nice because they stayed for almost 10 minutes. Uh, that means they not just dipped in and, and went away, and the bounce rate was uh, around 30%. And I learned that's very good as well. Um, the performance in the App Store of the graphic novel was also very good because um, um, Apple liked <laughs> the project, and um, they make, yeah, made advertising, banners, and so on. And uh, we are very happy that uh, we are now nominated for different awards. Um, next week, a Prix Europe, uh, two times. So for the digital part and also for the TV documentary part, the uh, Japan Prize as well. And uh, the graphic novel is just um, nominated for the German ebook awards. So the decision will be tomorrow. So now, do you want to play? Okay, thank you very much.